Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and this is Board Game Inquisition, where we're here to offer you insights and indeed information about the board games you might just want to have in your own collection. So here's my list of the best board games to have with a cup of tea. It's probably hardly stereotypical of me to say that as an Irish person I really like a cup of tea. And I find that I particularly enjoy pairing tea with my board games. And I think that there are some pairings that are definitely better than others. And I often wonder, you know, what game goes well with a cup of tea when I want to have one. So I thought I'd provide you with my list. Um, so first things to know about this list, it's not in any order. These are not favorited or numbered. I, I don't play favorites among my children. Um, and secondly, as well, I think a lot of these games will have be a little bit similar because I think what makes a, a good cup of tea game is its pacing. So there's time to pick up your cup of tea, sip it, you know, think about what your action is. You're not going to find any particularly fast paced games here. Um, but you probably will find a lot of games that involve tile laying because, you know, they often involve getting to take your time. But anyway, enough of that preamble, let's get straight to the list. So the first game we're going to look at is the very beautiful and hopefully well known at this point tile laying game that is Azul. So Azul is a game about creating patterns and you need to draft different colored tiles to be able to match them up together to be able to score points on your player board. It's a lovely little abstract game. Now, why does this go with your cup of tea? Well, because there's plenty of time for people to be making decisions. So each turn, you're gonna to have to draft tiles from the center, choosing which ones you want, which ones get left behind, um, how that affects your opponent or your own board. There's quite a bit going on there. And I think it definitely allows for a contemplative sip of tea where, you know, you can hold your mug and have a drink and think about what you might do next. And even not on your own turn, you'll find that on other people's turns too. I think there's just lots of space in a result to pause for a moment and just kind of take it all in and enjoy it. And not only that, but this one's quite a relaxing, I think, and chill game. I think abstract games can, can be like that. And they definitely lend themselves well to a cup of tea. So game the second is another tile laying game, but in a very kind of different way. And this is Dragon Castle. So Dragon Castle is essentially Mahjong um, with a couple of kind of different rules. So what you're wanting to do is match tiles of the same type and group them together to get bonuses. Of course, the difficult part is you have like a Mahjong pyramid built in the middle of the board and you can only pull tiles from a particular locations. So you can't just have them when you want. Um, and you can take them in pairs or singularly. And there's quite a little bit of thought that goes into deciding which tiles to take. And not only that, but deciding where to place them on your player board so you can group them together to get victory points. There's lots of time here to have a moment with your cup of tea while you're debating because there is quite a bit of thought that goes into your turn. And even not your turn, I suppose everyone else's turn too, because there are these kind of very important decisions where you're choosing between A and B and they're not overly taxing. It's quite a fun experience to play, um, but it's definitely one that you can have with your cup of tea. Despite the fact this game may have race in the title, it isn't necessarily fast paced. So Race for the Galaxy is a tableau building game where you're acquiring cards to lay them out in front of you um, and use abilities on them like planets and things like that to gain victory points and income and as always further cards. The interesting thing about Race for the Galaxy is that it's played in a certain number of phases each turn. And guess who gets to decide these phases? Well, you do. You get to pick which ones you want to play and your opponents also get to pick as well. And you get to partake in their turns, which I think is such an exciting thing and probably one of the best features of Race for the Galaxy. Now, people may be wondering, well, if there's so many phases and things going on, how exactly do you have time for a cup of tea? Well, the trick is, is that in between turns, um, when people are trying to decide, you know, what turn or what um, phases that they want to partake in, that's the perfect time to be having a drink of your tea, especially if you haven't already decided yourself. You can kind of have that contemplative moment. 
Another great time to have your tea while playing Race for the Galaxy is actually during the draw cards phase because inevitably someone will have decided to draw you know eight cards and keep two and they have to sit and debate which ones they want to keep in their hand. Another time for tea, lots of it in there and also sometimes there'll be phases that you don't have anything to do in either so you know you can get better acquainted with your cup. I think Race for the Galaxy is a nice kind of leisurely paced game and I definitely think it pair as well with a, a cup of tea. Next on the list is another space game and this is Zia Legends of a Drift System. Now don't let the lengthy title fool you. This is a game about space exploration essentially and about basically being able to choose whatever you want to do. You've got your own ship and you're heading out into the unknown. You can trade goods, you can t take down bad guys, you can partake in quests. There's a whole world basically that feels like you're flying your own spaceship. Um, and that's pretty cool. Now, how you fit the tea into this is really the fact that the turns are quite leisurely and they don't necessarily involve you know, a lot of in-depth strategy. You're deciding what you're gonna do next. And often you'll have decided that long before your turn comes round, giving you loads of time to have a bit of tea. But not even that, there's just something about this pacing of this game that's just really chill and relaxed. And it suits well with, you know, enjoying your tea. Overall, Zia is this really relaxed space adventure and who wouldn't want to fly in their cockpit with their cup of tea? I don't think this list would be complete without including the chillest and possibly most relaxing game I own and that is Wingspan. Wingspan is a game about, well, birds and you're encouraging them to come to your habitat so that you can observe them. What makes this game so relaxing is that there's little to no pressure put on you. There's no rush, there's no, you know, real kind of quandaries to encounter. It's more about you using your abilities, playing the birds that match those. It's all very relaxing. And of course, a cup of tea goes perfectly with something like this because there is no, I don't know, impetus upon you, I suppose, to, you know, hurry up and get this done. I think this game just fits so well with having a cup of tea. There's plenty of time to enjoy it, to sip, to take your thoughts, to look at each other's birds, to comment on the cards. Wingspan is just such an easy and fun game that I can't imagine not having a cup of tea with it. And now for something a little bit different. I do feel like puzzle games are great to have with a cup of tea because you're going to spend a bit of time deliberating over what it is you're able to do. Dado Cheng is no different. This is a resource management game in which you are a trader and you're trying to get resources by matching discs of the same colour on a grid. It's kind of like Connect Four. It sounds pretty straightforward. The trick, however, is, is that these discs are different colors on the other side. And when you connect groups of the same color, these flip over, meaning you can connect further groups. So you can see why there might be a lot to deliberate here. And this is why I think the cup of tea goes so well with it, because it takes a bit of time to work out your optimum strategy. And why not have a cup of tea to help you think? And not only that, it's probably to pass the time if you're the one waiting on your opponent to make their decision. And with how puzzly this game is, you're definitely going to require a cup of tea. In my mind, some games are just perfectly matched with having a cup of tea. And I think a lot of that is to do with their pacing. For me, Castles of Burgundy is kind of the ideal tea game. And it's not just to do with the pace of the game, I suppose itself, but it's to do with the kind of feeling you get while you're playing. Maybe it's the same idea of wanting a glass of wine while playing viticulture. I don't know. But Castles of Burgundy is a game about basically building up your domain. And you do this by drafting little tiles to go on your board. And you fill out particular zones to get bonus points. Um, and overall, it's kind of a very kind of chill and satisfying game to play as you watch your board fill up. Why does this go with a cup of tea, I hear you ask? Well, I think it's something to do with the fact that you actually, you don't have a lot of things in your hand while you play. And the most you're gonna be doing is taking a tile and placing it on your board. A lot of your decision-making happens in your mind. And so it gives you plenty of space, I think, to be holding on to the cup of tea, still thinking clearly about the game in front of you. 
And of course, I just think they match well together in just how the game feels. It's like you're lord of your own domain. Um, with your cup of tea, of course. <laughs> The final game on this list I think works so well with a cup of tea simply because it is a visual game and this is Walking in Burano in which you're constructing houses out of cards and each one has some sort of object of visual interest and the aim of the game is to score these objects by grouping them together or basically doing as the game commands. The reason I think this one works well with tea is because you're spending more time examining your cards or the cards that are coming up to see how they will fit in with what you've already built rather than using your hands. Also there's quite a lot of decision making to be made here, choosing one card over the other to put into your house and figuring out where you might go next in your strategy and I think that goes really well with having a cup of tea. Um, because it's not particularly fast paced, yes there are decisions to be made, but they're not really really taxing ones. And the game as a whole has a very chill and colourful vibe and it's definitely one that I would pull out and have a cup of tea with. And that wraps up some of my favourite tea games, well games to have while drinking tea. What are your favourites? What have I missed out on? I know I've forgotten games like Twilight Imperium, but to me they're more of like a dinner game than a tea game because you could eat an entire meal while playing Twilight Imperium and not miss anything. But thank you so much for watching and if you like what I do why not like or subscribe to the channel or if you've got any comments or queries you want to make about this list why not shout them off in the comment box below. And keep tuned in for more short informative board game reviews. Talk to you soon everybody. Bye bye.